Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we have one of the uh, our audience's favorite storyteller, Mr. Ballin. Also, I thought what you were going to say is we have one of our audience's favorite title because it has the word death in it. Well, good point. It I, I be, just, I'm just saying, those usually are the ones people It click seems on. to be very popular. So this story from Mr. Ballin is part of his Lost Episodes, Lost Episode number five. And he tells the story of four friends who decide to go exploring in a cave at like two in the morning just because. Awesome. What, I love Mr. B. What Allen. could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Mr. B. Allen, he rocks. Let's watch it. On the evening of August 17th, 2005, 21-year-old Stephen Hunley was having dinner with his five friends when somebody mentioned the secret cave. Mm. Having grown up in Provo, Utah, Stephen and his five friends had all heard the legend of the cave that was up in the mountains near Brigham Young University, where supposedly in the back of this cave, there was this underwater tunnel that led to a back room where there was this air pocket inside of which, you know, dark rituals and human sacrifice took place. What? And it was an interesting story. Well, right now my reaction is, it, let's dive no it. I thought there was no truth to it. But that night, one of Stephen's friends, 21-year-old Jennifer Galbraith, dropped a bombshell on the group. She said, not only is the secret cave real, but that she had actually been to it and knows what's inside. And so, of course, they're like, give me yeah, a break. Okay. You have not Whatever. been to the secret cave. It doesn't even exist. And she would say, no, I'm telling you the truth. I have been to something that I'm almost positive is the secret cave. And so the group's kind of smiling at her, and they're like, all right, we'll indulge you. Yeah, Tell us sure. where the secret cave is and what's inside. She said the cave she went into was on Y Mountain, so that's right next to Brigham Young University. And it was just north of the Seven Peaks Golf Course. And she said the actual entrance to the cave is inside of this little stretch of boulders where if you weren't looking closely, you couldn't even tell there was a space in between the boulders that you could walk down into. That's not you it. You really have to be looking this in between is, the boulders to see this little That's le- Devil's Hole in Nevada. It about 10 or 15 feet to the cave floor. Right, but well, he always put the actual no photo water. if it's, it's the actual photo. The entrance of the cave. Once you get down there and you're on the cave floor, in order to actually go into the cave, you need to hunch down because the ceiling of the cave is no higher than four feet. And at times, uh-huh. it's David lower. Vigiano so you crouch type down, it. And you got your flashlight, and you walk about 100 feet to the back of the cave, and you'll see there's this yeah. beautiful little pool of crystal clear water. And if you shine your light into this pool of water, you'll see on the bottom, beautiful. about five feet down, there is this little tiny opening just big enough for a person to get through. And that is the you secret underwater These? tunnel that is 15 feet Wait. long and it leads up to an air pocket on the other side. Jen told the group that clearly this is not a sanctioned cave that you're allowed to go exploring in. In fact, if authorities knew about it, they probably would just block it off. But she said whoever had found it first had tied a rope from a rock on one side of the 15 feet underwater tunnel through the tunnel to the air pocket and it was tied to some wood on the other side. And I've so seen that kind of stuff in dry cave with the ropes. But like going on water? Um, yeah, well, more like you're crawling in water, kind of, mm. but your face can just be above it. So you're yeah. crawling. So there's like an air pocket. It's wet and disgusting yeah. all below you, and you can lift your head up and breathe enough the whole way. So it is considered a dry cave. Of course, if there was a flash flood, yeah, rainstorm while you you're were in stuck. there. Well, in this cave, I don't know if you caught it, but you go down, and then there's a hole in the ground with water, and then you go underwater through a tunnel that only fits one person for 15 feet, and then you pop up in this air pocket, basically, mm-hmm. inside the cave. And yeah. that is the secret room. Okay. They That's do have some going. of those in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, where you literally do. You have to jump off the dry cave, get into water, and go under a little bit even and come up. Yeah. Now, as much as I want to say, like, how dare you to go underwater, man, I used to love those swim-throughs when I was swimming, when I was a kid. Like, of course. You would go sometimes to these hotels, typically in like Mexico, yeah. where there's like no loss, and they have like a like a cover p- piece of the pool, and like just water underneath. Like yes. if you try to go and pass out, you like you die, you drown. And dude, you can do these swim throughs like under bridges yeah. and stuff in in pools. Yeah. And also I, when I when I grew up in Venezuela, I mean, also no loss. Yeah, so. I mean Disney has them. Yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're all awesome. kids love that stuff. It's awesome. The only difference here is when you do jump in that water, at least the ones here in the North Georgia mountains, it's freezing. Cause well, have this one is in Utah. What do you think it's going to be? A little tiny tunnel that you could basically pull the line and it would mm. pull you through to the other side. Jen said she'd actually been to this cave just a couple of months earlier with another group of friends. And she said she was really scared about doing the underwater swim 
but what she remembers about the experience, what really stood out to her was how cold the water was. She awesome. said, you know, I got to the other side, no problem, but I was just so cold, I had to immediately turn around and go back out and warm up again. Yep. At this point, Stephen and the other friends are very intrigued by what Jen has just told them. She sounds like she's telling the truth, mm -hmm. and it sounds like she definitely was in you know, some cave. Whether or not it was the secret cave or not, it really didn't matter. They were just really interested in this cave, which they were now referring to as the Cave of Death. And so they started well, saying to each other, hey, let's just go tonight. Lovingly, let's go check you know? out the Cave of Death tonight. <laughs> And so by about two, three in the morning, the group was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do and it. Steven, unfortunately, he had to work the next day, so he couldn't go, even though he really wanted to. And so as the group headed off for Y Mountain, Steven headed home. Probably he was one of those like, ah, yeah, the de cave of death. Did tomorrow I have this uh, job interview at 7 a.m., I think, yeah. It's like, like yeah, my wife's making like beef uh, stroganoff tonight or the cave of death. Yeah, astronaut college. Gosh, tomorrow I have a... I'm going to go for the beef stroganoff, yeah. but normally I would do the I death cave, be but for it, it's just fight. But you didn't have to. It's pretty good. Beef, beef stroganoff. stroganoff. So the group of five arrives at the golf course parking lot, which is apparently at the base of where this cave entrance is going to be on this mountain, according to Jen's description. They hop out. They're wearing flip-flops and shorts. It's mild weather. And Jen assured them the walk up to the boulders, the entrance of this cave. It's not very far. And so they start walking up the mountain, and I'm sure some of the people in the group we're pretty skeptical that this place even exists, but they keep on walking. We're and at some point, time. Jen says there, there, and she points at a cluster of boulders, just like in her description. And so they walk over and they poke their heads over the boulder. And just like she described, there's this hole in the ground and they shine their lights down Why, into it. Jen? It looks like there's that flat spot like right. 10 or 15 feet down. And the group can't believe it. This place really does exist. All of a sudden, the group is really energized. You know, they're nervous, they're excited. And they're all kind of clamoring their way down this 10 or 15 foot section down to that start point. And while they're making their way down, one of them, 26 year old Joseph Ferguson, he's like, you know what? I don't really want to do this anymore. You guys can swim through Be the tunnel enough. of death and the cave of death. I'm going to stay out here. You know, we're probably Job not interview. allowed to be in here anyway. So, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be the lookout and I'll wait for you guys when you yeah. come out again. The other four chastised him briefly, but ultimately they didn't really care. And they turned their flashlights on. They turned around. And they what are you, an idiot? And, and then they go and go into the cave. Area down towards the pool of water. Joseph mm -hmm. turned around, climbed up, and he sat on one of the boulders. And he looked down towards that little entrance area. And mm -hmm. for a little while, he could hear the group still talking as they made their way farther underground. And then eventually, he couldn't hear them anymore. Joseph had no idea how long this whole process was supposed to take. You know, was it going to be five hours before he saw them again? Or was it going to be 30 minutes? He didn't know. And so after an hour, he started to think, okay, this feels a little bit long. And so he climbed down hungry. the folder to that little entrance area. Right. And he poked his head down and looked out across the area with the low ceiling to see if he could see flashlights or hear anything. Hello? He didn't. And so after a little while, he climbed back up onto the boulder and he waited another hour and he still hasn't heard them yet. And he climbed down one more time and he looked again, no light, no sound. And so at this point, he decides he has to call the police. Police and rescuers show up. And, and the name is Cave of, cave of one, Death. This right. cave even existed. And two, that no one had boarded it up yet because it was such a huge hazard. But either way, they began sucking water out of the tunnel and pumping air back in because Joseph had told them the group was going to be swimming through this tunnel where there was apparently this air pocket on the backside. And right. so they figured pump some air in there, keep them mm -hmm. alive until we can get them out. The pumping lowered the water in the tunnel by about two feet, at which point rescuers could actually just go into the tunnel and they wouldn't need to hold their breath. And that's when they reached Jen's body about halfway through. Oh. She was angled in such a way that she must have been coming back from the air pocket good. and the other three were stacked up right behind her. Investigators believe the group was able to successfully swim through the tunnel the first time All four, into man. the air pocket. They were in there for a little while. That can hold up to eight people inside CO2. there. Plenty of air. And at some point, they decide to go back. Oh. And so Jen was going to be the first one to swim back. She was the one that brought them in there. She'll be the one to bring them out. And the other three, it's presumed, were right on her tail. Maybe they didn't want to be the last ones inside of this creepy dark cave. And they were worried that if they didn't go out with the group, they might get lost somehow. And so they all basically jumped in right after Jen. They're all right on top of each other going through this tunnel. And so Jen made it about halfway before she got stuck on something and Ugh. she drowned. Now, the other three swimmers were right on top. I mean, what do you do? Blocked. So when the second swimmer yeah. came up to Jen's body, they couldn't have gotten through. They might have tried, but there was no way to get through. It's pitch Wedged. black. You're now blocked in front of you. And the other two swimmers are right behind you. That's so, why you don't panic in a cave. That this but, is so, but just think about this, okay? Think about how 
much people are afraid of being in a, in a cave underwater with no lights. Just the thought of being in a tunnel that is just you underwater with no lights, even with scuba equipment, is terrifying. Now, imagine that with, on a breath hold. Freezing. Freezing. Rough. Terrible. I, you know what? I'm wondering, number one, why did they turn around quickly? And the second thing is we don't know what they were breathing in that air pocket. That That's right. could have triggered this. And um, I'm glad you brought this up. Because I did a little bit of research about this. And I found another video. I'm going to link it below. But we're not going to react to two videos about the same topic. But the other video talks about, has a little bit more information. Like, for example, the fact that they were candles. They found candles in the air pocket. Like, people brought candles in or whatever. Right. So there's oxygen. If it was Candles burning. are going through oxygen. And there's no exit or there's no, like, it's just an air pocket. There's nothing else going in and out. So obviously the candles are burning oxygen. People breathing in and out are going through the oxygen. So like we don't know. And on that video, they say they were probably like hypercapnic. They were yeah. like uh, the CO2 was built out, you know? Yeah. So that's going to make it, it um, probably impossible for them to turn around and even make it. They're just running. They can't. They're running out of yeah. breath even hold it, ability and they're going <clears> to <throat> underwater and drown. Yeah, even if it's 15 feet, because I feel like there's a lot of people who watch these videos and they probably watch the Mr. Ballin video and they're like, it's just 15 feet. How hard is that? Not if you're hypercapnic. Hypercapnic, freezing, right? It's They don't know what, dark in a cave. And, and the moment you realize you bumped into a body and you can't go any further, you're underwater, you're freezing and it's totally pitch black you know you you know the panic sets in oh man which is going to make you probably want to breathe yeah. underwater and then you drown yeah your body's telling you breathe breathe breathe, breathe right oh, now right now right now what is that i can't oh, and you man. can't get back and you <clears throat> and you drown terrible terrible really bad and the other two swimmers are right behind you blocking your way out yeah so the second swimmer is pinned in the middle of the tunnel they can't move they can go in reverse but only if the third and fourth swimmer in realize what's happening and they too go in reverse right and again it's pitch black in a tight little tunnel and they don't Dude. know what's going on so second swimmer gets pinned third swimmer is really in the same position too they're blocked by the second swimmer and the fourth swimmer is blocking their retreat and so the fourth swimmer is really the only one that had the ability to save anybody's life what do you think that fourth swimmer thinks like when they hit the friend do you think do you think their their response, natural response is like, get out of my way, get out of my way? Or do you think there would be like, let me back out of here? What do you think? I mean, I would be like, I'm running out of air and I would try to turn around and go back. You think? I think I would. But mm. it's pitch black and you're panicking and you're cold. It's easy to, you don't know what you would do. And we don't know if they were thinking clearly. Right. Right. Because we keep saying, was that CO2 or partly CO2 they were right. breathing? Right. So they were they could have been confused. Right. Yeah, man. It's tough. tough to call. I mean, just think no. about a, a tunnel like like um, Rocky Horror, for example. Swimming through that, pitch black, and you <laughs> run into a block. You're probably going to panic. Yeah. I mean, you're panicking swimming through it. Imagine when you hit a roadblock. Oh, you would have had to go in reverse and start that train of getting everybody to go out in reverse. But this is real life. And so what probably happened is Jen made it halfway through the tunnel before getting stuck and drowning. The other three, one by one, realized they were trapped inside of the tunnel. They couldn't go forward. They couldn't go back. They can't turn around. It's pitch black. It's before terrible, long, man. they're thrashing and grabbing onto each other because they're panicking. Mm -hmm. And then they start inhaling water, and they drown too. After the bodies were removed... And that's a good point. They can't turn around. So even... Yeah. Remember, they got to be of the mind to say, oh, I'm going to back up. Yeah. Right? You can't even turn around. You know, you used Rocky Horror. You couldn't turn around in that thing. No. It's too tight to turn around. Right. So it's just a complete panic, and it's horrible. I yeah. Just imagine that feeling. Just imagine the five or ten seconds more before you start drowning. You're I, In pitch black. You're probably are just like, I'm done. Some discussion about maybe finding a way – to make the cave safe so people could go in there and enjoy it responsibly. But they looked at it and they said, there's just simply no way to make this cave safe. It's unbelievably dangerous, no matter what safety precautions we put in place. And so they decided to pour cement inside of it and cover it with rocks. And their only regret is they didn't find it sooner to do that sooner because they could have prevented this tragedy. Yeah. So 
we can't even go in there. It's completely sealed after the incident. Understandably so. You don't want people to be like, oh, the cave of death where those four guys, you know, died. We're not going to die. Let's go try it. I mean, I totally get it. Right next to a university. You know the kinds of stupid stuff I did when I was in university. I imagine everyone does. So I'm typically pro or anti, I guess, ceiling caves because somebody who didn't have the experience died in there. But in this particular case, I think it was the right move. Mr. B. Allen did a very good job of telling this story, and uh, I, I was visualizing what was going on in a very unpleasant way mm -hmm. through his storytelling, so a tough one. Yeah, and once again, there's another very informative video that I watched on this. I'm going to leave the link in the description as well, and um, man, it's not the first, and I feel like it won't be the last Mr. Ballin story that we cover. And in case you missed the last one, I'm going to leave it right here. John Bye. does a great job. Bye, everybody.